Today we are installing air conditioning in the 73 Dodge Challenger using parts from CVF and Vintage Air. We're using the CVF AC compressor because this car has a CVF drive kit already installed on it. So we just installed their compressor with brackets, spacers, and everything just to make it easy and to look really, really good. Vintage Air does sell their kits with or without an AC compressor depending on your application. Here you can see this is where the AC compressor is going to go. Installation of the AC compressor was very straightforward, barely even had to read the instructions. All the brackets go exactly where they need to. The belt is actually used off of the power steering system. The fan is a little close to the AC compressor, so we will have to put a spacer in between the water pump and the fan. The pulleys are an eight groove style pulley system, so there's no way that these belts are going to slip or anything like that. The spacer we have will fit between the fan and the water pump here. The AC compressor also comes in black and kind of matches the theme of the car anyways. Underneath the dash, we have just about everything removed. You can see this is the original controls. The only thing that's left in here is the ducting, which we will have to remove since the new vintage air kit comes with new defroster ducts. This is where the original blower motor would have come out of, and of course the heater hoses. All the lines will come out and come right up here to the compressor. Opening the box to the vintage air, we see we have a whole bunch of ducting. I laid everything out on a table so you can see the air box, the condenser, the hoses, fittings, controls. There's everything in this kit. Wiring. It just needs to be installed. Really, really easy, straightforward kit. So we remove the ducting from the dash through the vents here. We install this plug into one of the fresh air ports. These are some of the O-rings and seals for the lines that we will be using. We assembled the box. All the hoses need to go on because it's difficult to get to after the box is already installed. There's these nylon spacers that are on the air box. I actually have them on backwards in the picture, but they do need to go between the firewall and the air box. We install this cover over the original blower motor hole, which is where the lines will now come out. We seal it with this epoxy, and then we just go ahead and screw in the air box to the firewall. The instructions do give you points to where to drill holes into the firewall to mount the airbox easily. We also drill a hole into the firewall to route the drain tube out under the car. Some assembly for the condenser is required. We mounted the brackets and everything to it, and you just remove the radiator from the core support and slide it in between the two. I could not fit the dryer in between, but luckily, I don't have the front fenders in the car, so I just took the dryer off and just slapped everything onto the front and remounted the dryer. Ground all my lines and installed my sensor. The lines to the compressor from the airbox do have to be made. These came with the correct fittings that I needed. However, you can see this one is bent downward. I'd like it to come out a little more straight, so I bend it up. I mark my hose, I mark the fitting, and I use this tool to put a nice crimp right here on the fitting to the hose. Make sure you mark it before because it's not movable afterwards. This kit's really, really nice. I put mine in a vise so that way I could clamp onto it. This works just like a hydraulic brake flare tool kit. The rubber tape goes over these fittings, and now we have the AC lines installed completely. It's moving on to the heater core hoses. We route ours along the side of the AC hoses. This is a one-way valve. We're going to run this connector through a hole in the firewall. Now we move on to the controls. This replaces that big bulky mechanism behind the instrument cluster. This is our instrument cluster. It's a part from Classic Dash that we modified to fit the original controls. So we just popped it out. We trimmed away some of the plastics and everything that we had into it to make this fit. It already has pre-installed holes and brackets to mount it right to the original dash. I test fitted this part many times, making slight adjustments to the dash just to get everything to fit all the time. And this was the final mock-up for that. The air vent goes directly into its own hole and the ducting will just clip onto it from the back side. After I was happy with all the fitment, went ahead and reinstalled the knee bolster and everything kind of looked as if it was factory. We moved on to the wiring. This car has an aftermarket wiring harness in it, so I have extra powers, grounds, and other wires needed. This wiring harness was from American Auto Wire. This brown wire is for the illumination, so that way the controls can light up. 
I actually have an extra connector here for dash lights, which is where I'll wire it into. The relay and everything was screwed to the bottom side of the dash. The wiring for the controls ran out this hole here in the firewall. I'll fill the hole in with the urethane or something like that. There was the grommet was too small to fit the connector and all these wires through. The red wire went here to this, which is a battery power wire, which is a aftermarket connector from American Auto Wire, so I don't actually have to run it all the way out to the battery. Install the defroster vents here, routed all of the tubing and everything to all the vents as I needed, ran the wires to the pressure sensor from inside the car and the compressor. We charged the AC system with 1.8 pounds of Freon. And here we have it. The vintage air is installed in the Challenger. Lights up. Things turns on. Defrost. Vents. Everything works.